Hello everyone. This video is part two of a series of videos that I've entitled Kidneys for Key Stage 4. In the first one we talked about the basic structure of the kidney and we talked about the presence of these nephrons or filtration units, these functional units of the kidney. And in this video, part two, what we're going to look at is the process of ultrafiltration and selective reabsorption. So essentially the first two processes that you have at the kidney. So I've got a, a diagram here right in the middle of the page of this whole nephron if you like. But for this video I'm only going to pick up on certain bits of it relevant to the title. Now I just want to very quickly start by drawing out a very rough sketch of a kidney from the gross perspective. So here's the outer part of the kidney and we've got renal artery coming in, we've got the renal vein. I'm not drawing this at all to scale, I'm just drawing a quick sketch. And then we have the pelvis and the ureter coming down. But the reason why I'm just drawing this diagram is because in the first video I said that we have two kind of very clear sections of this kidney, an outer cortex. Well, there are many regions, but we said there was a clear outer cortex and inner, what's called medulla. And it's important because I want to highlight this on the main diagram here to say that this upper part is found within the cortex and the part below the red line is found within that medullary region. So that's really important to say. I mean, I've just I've done a very quick sketch of the kidney. I'd look at my first video to see the the true anatomical structure. But let's think about ultrafiltration because we said that blood comes in to the kidneys at high pressure, and that's going to happen in this section here. So we're going to need to label a few of the parts. We'll label these in green just to make them clear. So some key parts first of all. This one here is known as the afferent arterial. I should really extend the line. I mean this part here that I'm shading in green. The, the larger vessel that I appeared to label there, that's the renal artery. So the afferent arteriole is coming from that renal artery. Then we've got, I'm going to use colour here just to make it separate. We've got here the efferent arteriole. So we've got an afferent and an efferent arterial. And you can see that we have this kind of ball between the two, if you like. And that ball is a ball of capillaries. That ball of capillaries is called the glomerulus. So we'll just label that as the glomerulus. Now you can see that that glomerulus is sitting in a what appears to be like a capsule. In fact, if I just colour it in or shade it in purple just to highlight it there. That capsule there is called the Bowman's Bowman's capsule. And this is the first bit, if you like, of our nephron. And this is the region where we get the first stage really in the process of the filtration of blood from the kidneys. So blood at high pressure comes in from the renal artery through the afferent arterial and it passes through, so this blood flows through this ball of capillaries called the glomerulus. Now that glomerulus has tiny pores in or holes. So we'll put here there are tiny Holes, tiny holes in that capillary. So very small molecules are able to actually pass through those pores into the Bowman's capsule in this kind of direction 
here. So we just draw an arrow. So they move from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. And it's actually called the filtrate, what comes through. So small um, molecules would pass through the glomerulus into that Bowman's capsule. And when I say small things, I'm thinking like water, so water molecules, ions like sodium, salt, amino acids, and actually glucose. So water, salt, amino acids, and glucose all get pushed through that glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. Now, very big molecules like blood cells and protein cannot fit through. So they will continue their journey and pass through into the efferent arterial. So this is ultra filtration. Ultra because it's at a sort of micro level, if you like, and filtration because we are essentially filtering the blood. What we get passing into the Bowman's capsule is called filtrate. So small, small particles like water, salts, amino acids and glucose pass through. And that's the first stage, ultrafiltration. Now what's important is, and I'm going to colour in yellow here, what happens in this part that I'm just colouring in yellow here? Through the course of these sequence of videos on the kidney, I would be labelling all of, all of this diagram, but I'm only in this video labelling the parts that I'm concerned with at the moment. This part that I've just highlighted in yellow, that part there is called the proximal, and proximal means um, nearest the head, if you like, proximal convoluted tubule. And it's there where you get what's called selective reabsorption. Now, I've said in the first video that the purpose of the kidneys is ultimately to control the amount of urea and waste that we have in the blood, urea formed from an excess of amino acids, to control the water level and to control the salt level. But so there are certain things that we need to get back into our blood. And if I just highlight this here, we can see that we have this network of capillaries flowing around this picture here, around this nephron. So we've got a good blood supply here so that we can get things out of this proximal convoluted tubule and back into the blood. We are selectively reabsorbing what we want. So we're going to selectively reabsorb some sodium. So that's our opportunity to, to our sort of first element of control of our salt level. So if we want, we get a certain required amount of sodium being reabsorbed back into the blood. So sodium, just where I've drawn a black arrow, sodium can come back out. Amino acids can also be selectively reabsorbed. So from that filtrate, what passed through the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule, amino acids as required can pass from that proximal convoluted tubule back into the bloodstream into normal circulation. And also glucose. Glucose is reabsorbed from the filtrate back into the blood. And that's essential to know because I teach my students that glucose shouldn't appear in the urine. If it does, there's a sign of some malfunction with the kidney. It could be a sign very clearly of diabetes and poor glucose control. So glucose is selectively reabsorbed from the proximal convoluted tubule back into the blood. So in summary, ultrafiltration happens in the glomerulus in Bowman's capsule. Selective reabsorption happens in the proximal convoluted tubule. And just to finish, I'm just going to shrink the screen for a moment here. Because what I want to do is just, if I can, put in this picture here. Shrink it down a small bit. Here are some cells, actually, of the proximal convoluted tubule. And what I've done is I've almost zoomed in on one particular area, the bit where I've just put an asterisk here. And I have a bit of a diagram of that. Now, the reason why I want to show you this is because in the proximal convoluted tubule, most reabsorption is by active transport. 
Now, active transport is kind of like the opposite of diffusion. With diffusion, particles go from high concentration to low concentration, so with the concentration gradient, and it doesn't need energy. Active transport, on the other hand, does. So active transport is when molecules move from where they're in low concentration to somewhere where the actual concentration is higher, and it needs energy for that process. So most reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule is via active transport. The cells of this first coil tubule are packed full of mitochondria, and that's what we can see here, those little blue dots, packed full of mitochondria. And we have large brush borders to increase the surface area for reabsorption. So that's what I'm showing here in this sort of enlarged picture. We can see that the outer surface has this brush border-like appearance, designed to maximise the surface area so we get the most amount of reabsorption of salts as required, amino acids and particularly glucose, so that all that is left passing down through the filtrate into the medullary part of the nephron would be water and salt and urea. Because in the next part, what we're going to be doing is fine-tuning, essentially, the concentrations of salt and water that we're going to reabsorb and we're going to lose. And we're going to really concentrate that waste to produce urine. So we're going to produce urine in the next stage. We're going to have some urea, a certain amount of water, a certain amount of salt passing through these um, tubes, which I'll just label here just for convenience sake. So this one here is loop of Henle. So we're going to have the filtrate going down the descending limb of the loop of Henle, then up the ascending limb in the next tubule, and then down the collecting duct. And that would pass on to the bladder. But in, in the next video, we'll talk about that. So this video is about ultrafiltration and selective reabsorption. Blood at high pressure comes in through the afferent arterial, and passes through the glomerulus where small, small molecules like water, salt, amino acids and glucose pass through into the Bowman's capsule. But large particles like blood cells and protein are unable to. And of that filtrate, amino acids, glucose and a certain amount of the sodium is selectively reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule back into the bloodstream. Okay, hope all that helps.